So that wiring for a commercial semi-trailer is different than this wiring for an RV. wire pulled out from under the cap and all of a sudden one two three four five six now I've got seven wires I only counted six at the end so did I miss count or this is the ground lovely how it goes from big to small Oh, it was caught. oh, that's going to be a problem. All right, voila, you're out. So I'm kind of thinking of still just leaving this here. And running it back to where it came from and hooking it up to that junction box. Doing that idea, I don't know what this is. So is what I've got going on is I'm gonna mount that box. I gotta find a piece of angle iron that I can bolt to them two bolts there. And then we'll mount that box on that angle iron. <laughs> back in the shop but I got my wiring junction box all done bracket made up for it so we just got to prime it paint it and then stick it in right back in there and then we're ready for wiring <laughs> So what I've got going on is from up off the top of the doghouse, these three, I'll say medium sized wires are harnessed right here. You can see same thing goes up on top of the dash and I didn't follow those tracing back. I, I have a, uh, there's a bunch of fuses up on top that are labeled pretty good. And I think if I, if I did trace them back, they would tell me exactly what they are. All right. So I guess is what I need to do is do I want to take the dash apart and follow these or I could just have my kid come and hit all of the lights and I could test them I could test each one and determine what's what um is what I'm gonna actually what I'm gonna do now first is mark with tape at this side of the harness and this side of the harness what the end of the wires are colored I'm hoping I get to a spot where I can read it. Or, well, we'll just cut a chunk off and take it in with independent like this. And uh, that's how we're going to do that. So we're just going to do this at the end because it's 
You're gonna get, get cut back here anyhow. There we go. So I'm waiting for the Leatherman. I always carry one of these things with me. Alrighty. Well, I guess that means I'm going to town. Loom, wire. I'm gonna take this with and get, get some wire that's this size also. I think this was 45, what's this say? Four or five, blue. Oh, so the wire is marked. This is blue. No way. That's going to be way awesome. Let's see here. This one should say yellow on it somewhere. Y-E-L, yellow. Yep. Cool. So let's, let's confirm this one more time. There it is. So this one is green. GRN, green, yep. Awesome, so these are all even already marked, so I really didn't need to do that. But it's a quick, even a quicker reference, so I like that. We're gonna be quick with this so we don't chip the paint. It's gonna go right in here where that blue is, where the two bore holes are. is I'm going to take this fitter and my idea is to put it up in through this hole here just like that and then all the wires will come down to it into my conduit and my conduit will my conduit will follow this stuff here down around and under the frame and then up inside the frame and it'll just run down into our junction box right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna get a round file, see what we can do. Yeah, perfect, there we go. All right, that didn't take much at all. Got it on and started. Oh, the pipe just came out. It's going to it's going to turn the fitting, so I'm hoping. All right. Now it's time to start fishing wires through. There goes the ground. That's gonna fit. There it is. Oh yeah, it fit. That was down beautifully. I love that. That's absolutely great. I'm very happy with that. Lock is in place. There's our wire. Here's our bundle. do with this, we have this, like this, got that, I'm just going to pull everything right back through here. Proving to be a little easier to push it. being plastic I'm afraid to go much tighter so we're gonna call that good if anyone knows what this thing is right here I thought it was a shock at first but it's looks like some kind of little air tank or something if you know what that is uh, please leave it in the comments down below help me out so I'm going to this way
Oh shoot, I already screwed up. We got a bracket here, we gotta go around. Now, let's come down through here. Or down here, turn right there. All right, we're up inside the frame, that's where I wanna be. We're plenty far enough, so that's good. Now, we go back. Start securing. Here. All right, I've got everything about as zip tied as I think I need it. I guess let's pull the box back out for this third time. See if we can get that fitting to fit in there, I guess. Definitely do not do this in less than three quarter inch with these seven wires. It's, I definitely would not want another wire in here. Pretty snug the way it is. So here's how the commercial semi-trailer wiring turned out. There's the box, everything's in there. <clears throat> now, the wiring, I believe the wiring is the same, but there's different signals going through different wires. So that wiring for a commercial semi-trailer is different than this wiring for an RV. The signals are different somehow. I forget exactly how they are, how it is, how it works. But your RV works similar to the lights. So that's what we ended up doing later on is tapping off of the lights for the RV. So you'll see that in the next episode. Thanks for watching the progress on James.